Okay, I thought we might step off planet Earth here for a minute and talk about things in a larger scope, perhaps, than we normally do. We're normally talking about, even though I try to expand what we talk about as human history, we're talking about a small, tiny band in time compared to the time of our planet, and indeed that has a tiny reference to the entire universe. So... It's been said, uh, yeah, I've watched a little too many Carl Sagan videos here recently, and uh, I'm not going to begin to try to give you a Carl Sagan view on things, and I haven't wrote anything up formally. I'm just going to try to touch on a few subjects and see if I can't get some type of clarity and maybe uh, some understanding, and I would like somebody to kind of debunk what I'm saying whenever I say this. You see this dark cloud that's in this picture here, and you can see that the uh, light is shining through in that one spot and bearing through it, but the other spot it's not. And if you look in that field, how many millions of stars are in our field? And when you zoom in on that, you realize that some of those are actually galaxies and things along that situation. It puts things in a different perspective. I actually think that uh, it's a normal phase for any intelligent life forming on any one of these dots or around it itself uh, because these are all suns of course uh, every little dot that you see here is actually a sun most of which are in our Milky Way but some of which aren't and the galaxy you see right in the center of your picture is actually just like our own galaxy that contains these almost trillion stars that you're looking at some of which are very close and bright and they make up the constellations that we talk about. Now, if we peer out, though, past, like, this view and go to a blank spot that's in between all of these, like they did in the deep field, we find that there's so many more galaxies, like you see to the right and to the left of this star we're coming in on, which is just one of our part of constellations. People talk about dark matter. And that cloud that we were looking at earlier is definitely not lit up. And so if anybody studies physics or anything, or a physics guy gets a hold of this, I'd probably like some type of exclamation to where this, what I'm saying, will not explain dark matter somewhat here. Give me a moment. Whenever we go to a deep field shot like this, and we start looking in, one thing that they've noticed is that all of the reddish-orange ones that you're looking at here are actually going away and are far, far away, like the one in the bottom picture. And if we were to pretend that this was a star or a galaxy, and this was a star or a galaxy, or any of the whiter ones here versus any of the redder ones, so let's pick this dark red one right here that's in the middle of my little hole now. You see it there. It's very red shifted, right? So this one is much farther away, but also going away from us. And it's red shifted because the light coming at us is slowed down where it's not quite at the speed of light. And so the wavelength is bent slightly. It's kind of not going, eh, it's going, eh, coming at us. And that slight 95, not 100 miles an hour shows up as a redder shift. Now, another oddity is with stars, they can be a sun, and a sun can be a red sun, a red dwarf star or whatever. It can be a red, it can be a yellowish, which is what we kind of call ours. But ours is a full-spectrum sun, and they really all are fairly full-spectrum, but they're geared in certain spectrums we see. And then the farther are they away and moving away from us, they appear to be more red-shifted. Well, we know now by peering at that deep field that we were talking about that actually there's billions of galaxies out there and they are reaching past the point that we can see. In other words, it's kind of a depressing thought, but there are galaxies that are forming that we'll never get to see because they're going away from us faster and farther than the speed of light which has already reached us from whenever they were closer to us and as they've gone away we're no longer seeing them.
okay? Now, that has a mass to it. Just like this cloud that's slightly lit up here by all the stars that are in between it, around it, and behind it, illuminating it, just like smoke with a light behind it. But whenever we have that all over the universe where there aren't lights that are lighting it up to where we can see it real good, then that's dark and not light or lit matter. Now, follow me here. They talk about this dark matter, dark energy, blah, 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 right? So what if the universe is not 14.2 billion years old because that's all we can see? Now, we rewind back the universe, the galaxies and they seem to converge back at 14.2 14.3 billion years ago but that's what we see how long would it take before it all comes back well we can't see the edge of it so everything that's outside the edge of our view has a weight or a mass to it and we're not figuring that in and every block or dark piece in space like this which contains a hell of a lot of stuff like the horse said nebula there laid on its back contains mass all these gas clouds contain mass okay so set let's call that x1 now x2 is the fact that every star you're looking at has a lot of planets around it and it seems like that every solar system is somewhat like ours with a myriad of differences but somewhat like ours and if you added up all of our planets and mash them into a ball it'd be close to the size of our Sun or so or the Sun's a little larger than that and that's about it right you know double that size eh. and, it, and of course you can get giant stars but then you can get giant planets if a planet gets to a certain size it tries to ignite and you get double suns blah 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 blah, blah. okay go okay. but every planet around every one of these stars is not lit not in any way shape or form not a single asteroid not a comet not an asteroid belt not any of the matter except for the star do we see are we figuring that in and the amount and mass that it would be when we're figuring out that we're missing something with this dark matter you follow me is anybody following me I know I'm not probably not presenting it to you just correctly. Hopefully most of you follow me. There's a lot of things that aren't lit up and therefore they're dark. So if that's dark, that's dark matter and how much is there? And it's like, well, there's a hell of a lot of it. Are y'all figuring this in? Are you are you possibly figuring it in? Or are you possibly not figuring it in? And the fact that let's just say there's twice as much universe as we can see since we're missing half. Well, does that all of a sudden make it equal? And is that what's sucking it out faster that's the dark matter we're talking about is the fact that it actually is farther than we can see with the speed of light due to the distance of the telescopes and blah, blah, blah we're looking at. You know, it's, it's going to get to the point where by the time we get the technology, we may never be able to see it, but we'll have to find a place that shows you more like the farthest point, and then we'll have to shoot something at near the speed of light with a telescope on it that direction to try to cap capture ancient images and then have that shoot the image back to us real quick and hopefully we'll end up seeing into the edge of stuff but look at all this dark matter I know there's a bunch of bright spots in front of us but look at all the dark matter and look at all the planets that could possibly be around every single one of those stars and of course some of these stars are actually galaxies and the galaxy is full of a trillion stars but every one of those stars has stuff around it are they figuring in the amount of mass? So we're going to call that x2, okay? We're just, okay, so now we've got a variable over x, but we're going to, you know, x1 plus x2, is this what they're calling dark matter? Now, whenever you get a star to freak out, like this one looks like it may do any time now, it's going to turn into a black hole or a white dwarf and die. So whenever it turns into a white dwarf and it dies, let me just go back here again. I tried this once and then uh, I had to clip it apart because uh, it got flagged. Apparently I picked some kind of NASA footage that was illegal. Hopefully this one doesn't do the same thing. 
I apologize. So, oh God, where was I? Anyhow, so X1, X2, this amount, is this what people are using to figure in this amount of dark matter that we're talking about? We go with a third concept here. Whenever we see a white dwarf and all these things and supernovas and things that have happened, are we always seeing and figuring in the amount of cloud or the amount of weight that it has? And surely a lot of these have decayed to its part, and then they're no longer somewhat visible to us. But they're still there, and the planets that would be around them are no longer visible. And then so, in our sky, there's a lot of dead stars, right? And these dead stars are no longer lit. No longer the planets around them are what's left of that stuff. But that stuff usually disintegrates, and it'll slowly turn into one of these clouds. But none of these baseballs and golf balls of crap are we even thinking of possibly as being in that weight at all either. Are we? I don't, I don't think that we are. I, you know, I haven't talked to a physicist deeply. And I'd like to have a little, you know, 30, 45 minute conversation with one and see if this is it. But maybe somebody who knows can actually explain the fact of whether or not they're figuring in this concept of what we don't see and what we know now that we're probably not seeing. So if we're not seeing it, not knowing about it, are we figuring it in? So that's X3, okay guys? Plus, now we're gonna go to X4. Again, we have that idea of a black hole. And we know black holes contain a crap load of matter. They are the center of galaxies, like the one that we see coming into the field in the bottom of the shot here. And in the center of pretty much every galaxy, like the one that's there and the one that's over here, here and over there, and deeply if we go, there's a lot of them, that there's a black hole inside of each one of those galaxies in the center of our own galaxy. We recently got our very first footage of it. I'd like to throw a picture in here, but it really just looks like an orange blurry halo with a darker spot in the center of it. And it shows you that there's an eclipse point. There's a point where the light can't get out of. And because it's thinner on your side, like if a basketball was on fire, it, you can see the basketball in there as being nothing in the glow. And therefore, they can see the blackness of the edge of the corona of what's going into it. Um, and I think that's incredible. But at the same time, how much mass does a black hole have? And does a black hole reflect the amount of mass that it is and all of the amount of mass that's gone into it? I'm not sure we can weigh a black hole at this point or anything, but are we figuring this into the idea of black matter or missing matter, which we call all this, you know, these terms? I sometimes think that the term that we give certain things limits us in some way because we have connotations towards a term you know and of course dark matter you can't see it and the sky is black except for the white dots well dir i was a kid and i was like well how about the stuff that's not lit up and i'm not sure i've ever been given a correct answer not that i'm a physicist in any way shape or form but all these clouds that aren't lit up and everything that goes along with that and all of the essence of a black hole. I mean, some of these black holes, like you can look at this cloud that's here and this apparently happened from one big supernova that's around it and it's lit up because these light stars are all in there and then that cool place in the middle that almost looks like a tree of life or people have said it looks like a devil trapped in the thing and waving his arms around or it looks like a, you know God creating planets or whatever it is, it's kind of going out of frame, but it'll zoom down onto it. It, that 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 has you know who but it, it it all this dark matter and this smoke that we're looking through here we we look at a lot of these things and have to look at them with x-rays and other vision because it gets so cloudy you can't see through it and you have to peer through this bs to try to get the x-rays coming off things and little crap doesn't put them out and they disappear all of a sudden right what about this black matter that's right there if there wasn't a star and they're lighting it up or if it wasn't backlit by that gas we may never see the horse head nebula. Well, you'd think that there would be black blotches in the sky then. Well, this is our galaxy. 
there's black blotches in our galaxy there's black blotches in that galaxy there's black blotches in that galaxy there's black blotches in every galaxy I've got an idea what if there's crap in between the galaxies other stuff left over you know let's call it question mark X to the what but that is also so that's X5 and if we figure that in, is that the dark matter that people are talking about, along with the lost planets will never or lost galaxies that we can't even see, along with the smoke that we don't figure in from all the galaxies that add up all together, along with all of the stars that have already decayed and died to the point and we don't see those anymore, along with all the planets around every possible star that we're probably not figuring in and asteroid belts and things that go along with that, and its mass along with the mass that would be in a black hole along with everything else we talked about and if we have that in the figuration does that give us any type of reality to it all so uh, here's a Carl Sagan moment um, we've lived all of our life on this little bitty dot right here and it, with some other planets right here, go around this sun. This is just a picture. And everything we've ever known has happened, if we look in the scheme of things, of just what we see in our visible spectrum of the 14 billion, not the possible 28 or whatever you want to go with whatever they can figure out, whatever they have figured out, you know, and it might change over time, but if we figure all that in, we're living in the last couple of seconds, and everything that we've ever heard of on the planet happens in the last few seconds of the last minute. If we considered it to be one day's worth of time equals all of recorded history from the 14 billion, we're only living in the last second of the last hour, of the last day, of the last minute, actually, of, of all of everything. And so there's been a lot happened. And I think that uh, one enlightening moment that happened to me whenever I was a kid way out in the country, I was looking up at the stars, and I had this little silly thought. I thought, what if somebody's standing on that ball, because of gravity, they're aiming right at me and I'm aiming right at them and I'm pointing up at that star and I'm going I wonder if there's any life around that star and they're actually pointing back at me and they're talking to their kid and they're saying hey yeah I wonder if there's any life out there what do you think how about that star right there do you think there's any life around that star well, I don't know daddy you know but of course in their language are they gonna be you know hey you know humans and all that type of stuff that, that that's the far-fetched thing somewhat but at the same idea it gives you a scope of things and when you look in this the size of our galaxy we've only been looking at this uh, in reality's form for a couple of hundred years now once we got telescopes and realized that we're all living inside a galaxy of a lot of stars and our sun is not the center of that we aren't we aren't the center of our solar system oh no and then our sun isn't even the solar uh, oh wow so all of these things that we've attached to all these things suddenly become this vast expanse and we're only a little speck sitting over here going around this glowing ball of dust in the middle of nowhere on one spiral arm of a galaxy that's one of a billion galaxies in our universe and hey I believe in UFOs the chances of them having formed around our corner of our spiral arm and those people being advanced of happening a million years before us uh, that's entirely possible it becomes more possible if you say well not in our spiral arm but in our galaxy it, it expounds times X and then whenever you say, well, not our galaxy, but out of all these right here, now you get a lot more chances. And then whenever you say, well, how about out of all these? Uh, now it's not even a possibility. There's life definitely somewhere else 
other than just us as a P-Spec, that we're the start of everything. There's too much time that's evolved to think that we're like the burgeoning edge of anything. We came out of the burgeoning edge of our planet, but we're not the burgeoning edge of everything, you know? And so a lot's happened before, and that's really my really my basis on the uh, do UFOs exist and all of this type of stuff is the fact that well they probably do I mean have they been messing around with us a lot oh I I don't know about that uh, there's some evidence that looks like there might be some connection there's evidence that says there might be some interaction people have seen some things I've seen things I've seen things you know so hey um, you have that type of aspect of it but in reality is uh, I mean, can you attach it to anything well I know they're I know they're out there but where out there are they and are they going to be, be able to contact us if they ever do are we going to be so juvenile to them that they just come and smoke us out of existence and take our crap and move on along beep beep thank you or are they and will we be to the point whenever we get to doing this more of a Star Trek ideal where do we or do we not help them do we or do we not mess with them I mean we've explored this quite a bit you can do it on our own planet with primitive people and what's happened to them and wonder if you should mess with things and all of a sudden you know or show up do something and leave and now you become a god somehow and things like this it's it's maybe not a great idea or, or is that the way it goes is that literally the way that it goes that it happens in that way and we were contacted some way at one certain point and that's why it is the way that it is um, you know so there's a lot of questions that people have in that way and I've explored it a lot I have thought a lot onto it and if I could give you any concrete on it I definitely would and I don't want to turn into some UFO thingy or whatever. I, I indeed, every time I see something, I, I can debunk it. That's it. Uh, so we can get off of that. But the, the concept that uh, we're the focus of the God that created the universe is uh, probably shallow and very self-centered. And I, I think Carl showed that to me whenever I was a little kid inside of a sentence or two and all you had to do is have a visual like this and go hey what dot are you near and what's all that mean in the big scheme of things and is it all about you everybody wants it to be all about them but it's not really all about them but if we ruin it all then it won't ever be about us at all will it so we've got to watch that we don't ruin it all and we've got to get past the point that we're at now to the point that you see in the movies and I don't know whenever I was a kid I thought it was an easy thing to do looking back on it back on it late 50s early 60s and going through that seeing everybody in the style of everything that was going on then and how it changed rapidly you know which I guess was through that through disco and all of that you kind of had an idea that it looked like we were getting there but the space program shut down and the shuttle and then a couple of problems and it just stagnated and man I watched the Jetsons when I was a kid and I thought by now there's a good chance people would have a space station or six up there and a moon station moon station alpha moon station beta moon station we used to draw this stuff on paper me and my brother and stuff and little all kinds of you know it uh, of course that turned into sharks and so on when Jaws came out and then it just faded turned into something quite different and uh, never lost my luster for space and uh, what it was you know I uh, I found it to be something very different than what I was studying and it kind of put it in perspective because I'm trying to pinpoint within a hundred years of here or so and then you look up at what's going on in the sky and it's like you know in, in comparison it's just an odd odd thing but what if some of these galaxies are red shifted out of existence and we don't see them anymore I think now we've decided that's already happened and in fact some of them that we see at the edge are literally at the edge and we're seeing them winking out of existence 
but they're still there we just can't see them anymore they're reaching upon the edge of the speed of light and reaching back in time to the point the light's no longer coming from them and we don't see it anymore and the only way to ever see it again is to race towards them at the speed of light and try to catch up to it at a small differential they're still going to be going 95 and you have to go 100 and slowly catch them after you make the technology so I don't know how feasible that is in a concept or if we get to the point that we can actually peer a little farther than we're seeing now today you know this James Webb telescope and these things that are going on anyhow guys I feel like I've rambled through about a third of this and the other part I'm not sure I even gave enough eloquence about to uh, express my ideas on what dark matter might be and the things that go along with it and the powers that be with that but uh, we're overbearing our planet here's one more thought and that we need to get to the ability of being able to go to other planets and we've got to find one you can go to that's worth going to and even though there's a billion out there not too many are close to us in any way shape or form and we have to be able to at least get to those and find out if there's any way to do life so we have to start making these steps and if nobody ever gets up and starts walking we're never gonna get anywhere and I have felt an impatience all my life from the 60s because when they shut down the last few times they were gonna go to the moon I I remember asking why a few different times and then later whenever they showed it in the news and then said well they follow 1718 and da 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 and I'm like well, why you know and of course conspiracy theory X the aliens told them not to come back again and 2010 space odyssey and the obelisk and, and I'm like no not man okay you know why you know uh, well why didn't we well, we've done enough and there's not much more we can do and where we're going is not so much and you know all that type of thing well we've got it now and we're trying to reach towards it again i guess and they talk about you know here here in the next decade or so trying to get another little moon thing going on and perhaps even a moon base and uh, of course we're waiting for the first failure that happens in that in some way and how that you know how that affects us and if you can save that person that didn't relaunch up correctly or what happens and uh, see what we can do about it but that's still when we look back in a thousand years the all of that all of that's going to be looked at as being the first step it's still in the first step right now we look like we've gone up a flight of stairs but when you look back in a thousand years each flight of stairs is a step things look that way when you go back in old old times I'm looking at small changes small little and then they got this and then they got that well in our mind when we look at it now and we even talk about it we're like okay they went from here and then they got this and there's a little step and then when we really look at it and overall we're saying okay well here's a big landing there's a step here's a step here's a step and it's only about 10 steps so we were ugh, and there's about 10 steps and here we are and it's like no it's a little more <laughs> it's still more complex than that, but regardless, guys, what do y'all think about my theory, of course, on dark matter? Uh, you can leave, leave that down in the comments, and I hope somebody has some type of physics background and has touched upon this in some way in the reality that I try to express. Not in a, just going to write it off like somebody else already thought of it, so nah. I mean, you know, what's the reality of it all? And, uh, of course, some of the other thoughts, what do you have? Uh, towards the idea of the vastness of the universe and our necessary place on it and I think a lot of us believe that we really need to concentrate back on the space program and try to get something done for it quite a bit we spend billions on frivolous things now that really don't show any recourse at all and I keep talking about the comets and things and problems that could just wipe us out while we're sitting here with our thumb up our butt. And that's another thing that we need to dedicate to in some way. And of course, these machines that look for these things and early warning systems. And then what can you do if we have to get there? And then that's some form of protection, whether whenever it tries to happen, if it's worth a damn or not. You know, and so we need to really look into that a little more than I think we all are and to protect ourselves on the way 
to trying to find another distant world that we can go to because where we're at's real cool but wouldn't it be real cool to wake up every morning in the middle of that rose cluster uh I, you know it gets old living even on hawaii right so but wouldn't it be neat if we had a little bit different view than some dots and a few of these dots you can see slowly move in the sky and there's the moon <clears throat> what if this was outside your back door every night I wonder if the people that grew up on a planet that saw something different like this and not a moon that always faces them and gave them a slightly false sense of reality being exactly strangely the size of the Sun and it eclipsing if they come up with a totally different idea surely religions are somewhat the same with each other but it's another thing that I would probably find most interesting is the not the way the people think that we finally meet but what were your primordial religions and how did that come about and at what point do you feel you've made these steps and can you explain to me the old steps that you went through and the little baby steps and things does anybody have any of that and hey Maybe I can share you with what happened with us and then maybe we can talk about the reality of it all and then I know we have ideals and things and here's what we have going on trying to get somewhere and hopefully you've got something you can add to it. This is what helped all of human, humanity itself and mankind to get somewhere. When we meet these people, hey, they have X technology. We didn't have X technology. All it takes is that added to what we got and I, I really hope we have something we're offering to them that they've either lost or never even discovered. It might be something as simple as radio technology and that was their boon they never came through with, but they came through with X technology, whatever that is. Anyhow guys, I feel like I'm rambling a lot, but uh, a lot of weird thoughts like this go through my mind whenever I think about ancient space people now. Are they running around hiding behind clouds peekabooing with us right now? That's a totally different endeavor as to saying that once we become star travelers if we eventually run into somebody and perhaps the connotations of what all that means anyhow guys uh, like share and subscribe and enjoy and uh, we'll get back into ancient cultures on one of those little dots up in the sky or something that goes around those little dots in the sky and people that live on a little speck of dust floating in the shadows of a sun. Peace.